Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony North Eastern and I hope you're all keeping safe and well and most of all you're enjoying your hobby whatever it may be whether it's fishing, golf or model railways um, yes we're taking a little break from Jarra Road this week in order to talk about something that is relevant to model railways so let's wander over to the bench and we'll talk about timetables. So here we are, we're back at the bench and yes we haven't got a kit in sight, no pieces of card, nothing. So what we're going to look at is this timetable for passenger trains. Um, I'm doing this because I was inspired by David High's railway. Um, he did he did uh, a couple of running sessions where he used a timetable. Now, if you haven't um, looked at his channel, that's David Hyde. Um, yeah, have a look. He's he's done a bit of scratch building as well. He's he's done yeah virtually everything to do with the uh, model railways but yeah and his layout is called Daisley so I was inspired from what he'd done so I thought well I wonder if I could do the same and um, obviously you need a timetable because um, I haven't got a clue what one looks like how often trains run um, and so forth and so forth so this is what I've found. I found this on E and Bay. And um, yeah, it's between the September 64 to June 1965. And it covers all, well, not all the area of um, the Northeast, but uh, a good portion of it um, Northampton, Middlesbrough, Newcastle, and South Shields, and other branches. And um, so hopefully, at some point, I would uh, run a timetable into South Shields. So hopefully, in the near future, we'll have a running session where I can utilise this or incorporate this into the model railway. Obviously, um, there's no freight uh, in this booklet. It's just passenger services only. But um, I have spoken to our friend John Kurihe, um and he will give me um, some other information regarding what else ran into South Shields. So, getting back to uh, this document. Um, first thing I notice about this document, if I just move this forward up a little, there's a little paragraph here which says, when passenger trains are running late, drivers and motormen must endeavour to make up time with due regards to speed restrictions and the braking power of their engines and train. So, yeah, so seeing that straight away on the cover, so this is aimed at station staff, not... Um, uh, the passengers. So let's open it up and then we'll have a look. I have turned the cover and this is what is on the cover on the first page. So basically we got a, a map here which covers basically South Tyneside to Newcastle to Sunderland all the way down to Hart West Hartlepool, Billingham, Middlesbrough, Stockton, East Cliff, and then the line follows on to North Hallerton. So that's on the inside of the cover. And uh, yeah, a map of lines included in the working table of section F. And here we have attention 
train and engine crews, staff and yard staff. I do like reading some of these, especially that top paragraph. Always keep in mind that the customer is the buyer and that it is your job to make every buyer a satisfied customer. To that end, the following matters deserve your constant attention. So here we got 16 rules and regulations on how the staff should look after their customers. And um, <laughs> the best one that interests me is number 13. Avoid rough handling of your trains. Engine men have an viable reputation for smooth starting, running and stopping of their trains. Never lose sight of this feature as passengers are very conscious of rough movement. I think that's brilliant. And then you've got a few others. Avoid rough handling <laughs> of parcels, traffic and luggage. Rough handling causes damage which not only means claim for loss but frequently results in traders sending their goods by alternative means of transport. It's just a brilliant read. Right, so let's flip the page. And on this page we have the index. So we have Newcastle to Middlesbrough and North Allenton, Newcastle and South Shields, North Allenton and Middlesbrough to Newcastle, South Shields to Newcastle, South Shields to Sunland, and Sunland to South Shields. So basically we just uh, have an index there and then we have some notes. The codes in the columns immediately above the train titles of a train report and is carried wherever possible. So basically this is just telling us how the timetable is set up. Horse boxes, carriage trucks and additional non-passenger carrying vehicles not to be attached to any passenger train except on the authority of the divisional manager or movements operations manager. Oh, okay. Right, so that's what we've got on that page. I'm just going to show you a few um, timetable pages. Uh, so just just a few. I'm not going to show you them all, otherwise I'll be here all the week. Um, yeah, so this is F6, North Allerton and Middlesbrough to Newcastle and Sunderland to South Shields. So you've got two um, train movements there. And... Uh, and it's on the down line. So what I'm looking at is these letters. It runs right along the top paragraph there. So we got 3G13, 2G50, 1J50 and so on. And what's interesting in this little box you got PCLS. That must stand for parcels. And then here we have DMU, DMU and then DMUSX. Now I have no idea what the SX stands for, but if there's any railway men watching this video, they might be able to let me know in the comments. And there we have all the arrivals and departures for um, all the stops regarding the two trains. So what I'm interested in is the South Shields trains. So let's move across onto this page and here is even more information. Um, tells you where the trains have come from. Like you've got the 822 from Northorpe, the 755 from Leeds City, and 933 parcels Darlington to Middlesbrough, and then another parcels. So it's just full of information which 
I'm sure I could use on the model railway. So now we're going to look at two train journeys from South Shields. I'm just picking this one up random. This one leaves South Shields at 8 minutes past 6 and it arrives at 29 minutes past 6. Total of 21 minutes. So it stops off at High Shields, Tyne Dock, East Bolden, Seaburn, Monk, Weir Health and then Sunderland. So yeah, it's just, and then we've got uh, a different train, so that train for Hartlepool is on this line here. So that's Newcastle all the way through to Middlesbrough. So yeah, interesting stuff. And that's on the up line. And now we're going to look at the Newcastle to South Shields train. Um, yeah, total journey time of 15 minutes. So it's a little bit uh, shorter than the Sunland train. And, uh, and there's all the stops. So it departs from Newcastle, Gateshead East, Felling, Pilo, Heaven, Jarrow, Time Dock, and then High Shields, and then arrives at South Shields. And uh, there we have the mileage, total mileage, 10 miles. <laughs> cool. And uh, um, looks like it's got parcels added to it. Yeah, so it's, it's interesting stuff. And um, I'm sure if, if you guys want to add a timetable to your layout, I'm sure something like this would come in handy um, for you guys. I mean, this this book it only costs us about six quid, and I think it's worth it because, uh, yeah, it just it's just full of information. Basically, all I've got to do now is go through it and see how many trains went in and out of South Shields in a day. Right, so we're looking at a Sunday's timetable for Newcastle, Middlesbrough, Northampton, South Shields and Sunderland. And guess what? There's no trains running to South Shields on a Sunday. Look, it's blank. You follow that line right away through the day. And it's blank. No trains on a Sunday. Well... Wow. That rules out a Sunday running session at the North Eastern then, doesn't it? <laughs> I think we're going to have to break the rules on this one. I was just going through the booklet and i just seen this. This just, this just made me laugh. Apologies when pigeon traffic is passing. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear, I just thought I'd uh, show you that because I'd... Uh, yeah, that, that's made me chuckle that has. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I found this quite interesting. And I'm sure that what's in this booklet will go a long way for me to create a running session to a timetable, which hopefully I'll produce the video over the Christmas holidays. And... Um, yeah, looking forward to doing that. Just one more thing before we go. I've decided to do the Jarrow Crusade Monument and then add it to the wall that I'm doing for Jara Road because I have a little space there. Now then, for those of you who don't know Jara very well, um, in 1936 they did a march from Jarrow to London 
um, due to the plight of the people of Jaro um, being out of work. And um, that's what this monument is all about. Um, yes, you can still see this monument today. Um, they have two actually. They have one in the town centre, which is a more or less a 3D monument with a, a few f people, um, well, like a statue more, more than anything, of, of people uh, on the march. But this is a um, like a 2D image which is on a wall and it's still there at the metro station, the Jaro metro station. So my plan is to add this to this small section of wall here. Now I've already glued the same picture to this piece of card so I'm waiting for it to, to dry and once it's dry I'll um, get a very very fine blade and cut out the outside profile of this um, monument, paint it silver and then glue it onto this wall here. Um, that's the plan anyway. It measures about 35mm across and 35mm tall. So basically I've just shrunk this um, picture down. Um, not too small because I um, still want to be able to highlight all these little features, heads and whatever, and the little dog and the flag. And then what I'll do is I'll just run a pen line around the profiles of these people. And hopefully, it, once it's painted silver, it should uh, look quite good. I'm a bit concerned about the dog trying to cut around that tail, and that's going to be fun. But uh, we shall see what it looks like once it's done. Right, so that was one of the trickiest things I've had to cut. I've had to be really, really careful here, especially around the dog's ears. Um, I didn't want to chop one of them off. <laughs> um, yeah, so what we'll do now is we shall paint this up and hopefully the black lines that I've left with a pen will just come through the paint a little bit and then I can remark them uh, the lines back up again. But yeah, that took a while to do. And here it is finished and stuck onto the wall and I have added a little plaque which was also in the photograph and uh, by highlighting or imprinting the card um, as you can see I have highlighted it even further with a pen so yeah it looks looks all right yeah I'm quite pleased with that but where it is on the wall we're gonna have to wait find out until next week. So that's my little tribute to the Jaro Crusade. So here's where we started the video and um, here's where we shall finish it. Ah, there's my bus over there, but I rush along and catch it. Um, for those of you who come by train, the eight minutes past six is just about to leave. So, on that note, it's time for me to leave. Till next time, stay safe everybody, and thanks again for watching. Bye for now. Bye.